Yes, of course, we have to have a bunch of tests, but this is going to be for the Scuba Gen V3. Test, test, de test, test. <laughs> hey guys, it's Dill Jan here. Okay, so before I talk about the scuba gen, I want to explain the hat. Every couple of years, I let the uh, dye grow out of my hair so I can see how much gray is in it. And I'm in the process of doing that. I've got huge gray roots. So I'm going to try to keep a hat on until I grow the hair out and get the, the rest of the dye cut off. And then I'll unveil the gray in my hair. <laughs> That's just a housekeeping note. When I first got the scuba gen kit, I thought, well, this will be a nice little project. I'll film putting it together. It'll be 30 minutes of me putting it together, edit it down to a five minute video, and voila, a nice little toy to play with. A week later, an invention of a lot of new curse words, <laughs> I found out this is not as easy as I thought. I built several atomizers. Usually I just slice off a little piece of uh, Teflon base or Delrin, drill holes in it, and I use motherboard standoffs. I mounted them with little bolts, and then I screwed my um, nichrome or ca uh, canthal heating coil onto two little screws on the top and I played with it. It was a lot of fun, but I thought they were too fiddly and anyway, uh, so I thought this would be a no brainer. It's this video I hope will help someone who's considering getting a scuba gin or if you've got a scuba gin and you're having the same troubles I ran into or you might be able to help me out with some things that I'm ha that I had trouble with and I'm still having trouble with. Okay, so let's just dive right into this. The first thing to do, oh, where I got most of my information on how to assemble this, I tried to read through a lot of the stuff at e-cigarette forums and things, but there's pages and pages. Over at vapax.com slash scuba gin is a list of instructions on how to assemble this. I roughly followed those, but uh, not exactly. <laughs> there were things I, anyway. Okay, so what comes in the scuba gin kit? Well, first of course, there is the uh, the stainless steel main body of the scuba gin, the uh, stainless steel cap for the scuba gin, this part, a um, 11 inches of 22 gauge wire. This is stiff stranded copper wire, very stiff. Two of these two and three quarter inch polycarbonate tubes has an inside diameter of three quarters of an inch and an outside diameter of five eighths of an inch. Two of those. It uh, had five inches of fiberglass cord, a piece of heat shrink, a clear miser, a dozen of these little three quarter inch nails. Had four of these five sixteenths inch springs, four of them, had three of these press fit fittings. Um, the nails slide in and out of them, so I, uh, anyway, we'll get to that. And it had uh, eight of these O-rings, and in my kit, these O-rings are slightly too large. So <clears throat> that's what my kit came with. Okay, so the first thing you do is you got to put the center connector into the scuba gin. Now, Vapax says you take a clear miser, take the clear thing off, and you cut it off so that you've got your end connector. This is a 510. Then you solder the red wire, you solder the wire onto the post, you cover it with heat shrink, then you put it on the bottom of your scuba gin feed the wire through, put this on the bottom of your scuba gin, and you can either press fit it or however you can get it in there. Okay, uh, I didn't do mine that way, but I was using an 808 connector which has opposite threads. I pulled out the center, the center pin and the, and the gasket and set them aside and then put the 808 connector on top of my scuba gin hole. Then I used a bolt in the center that uh, didn't booger up the threads and I set this on a board and I pounded it in. 
Now this is tricky and hard to do. It's hard to do if you've got the wire soldered on. If you break the wire off after you've already press fitted this in here, you're never getting this back out. So uh, that, was a, that was a fiddly bit. Okay, so once I had my connector inside the, the hole, <laughs> then I took my uh, center post. Well, I don't have one. I took my little center post, I stuck it on a toothpick with the rubber gasket on there and I soldered the wire onto, onto that, let it cool, and then I carefully put the gasket back in the hole and put the center thing in, feeding the wire up. Now, I didn't use the wire that came with the kit because it's too stiff. If you think about it, once you get the wire fed up through the center post, you're going to be taking it over to whatever you're working on that's going to be your positive side of your scuba gin. And uh, you've got really no, you got no strain relief. I wanted to leave the wire hanging out because I wanted to do a different type of a project with this, but there's no way to make a strain relief. And if you use too much of the stiff wire, there's no way to push it back down in there without putting a bind on this post. It's just a lot of, <laughs> a lot of problems. So I used a um, 22 gauge wire that was um, flimsier. It was uh, more pliable. Flimsier. So once you've got the atomizer connector press fitted into the, uh, the scuba gin and you feed the red wire up, now you're going to be putting this red wire onto a nail that's going to go in one of these holes. Now this is my styrofoam mock-up of the top of the scuba gin. This is my drawing of the scuba gin that you can see, but here is my mock-up. It's got two holes that are not all the way through. That's for mounting your positive and negative connections. It's got two holes that are all the way through. And this is gonna be for wick. And it's got a hole that's all the way through that's your filler hole. Okay, and then this is the big pedestal that comes down. Imagine the big stainless steel pedestal. All of this is conductive. So now you've got a red wire that comes up through the center hole you want to mount it, you want to fix it to a nail that's going to go in here. But this, can't, this nail, pretend this is a nail, can't touch anything about this because this is conductive. It's going to be negative. Well, I'm calling it negative. It can be whatever you call it. I'm calling it negative. One side's got to be negative, one side's going to go positive to the battery. So it's got to mount in this hole without ever touching anything having to do with the, with the, uh, the stainless steel. Otherwise, you've got a short. So on vape hacks, they talk about scrounging up an ink pen, a pen, and uh, it fits in these holes. It's an eighth of an inch. I had to go through a lot of pens before I found one that actually did fit the hole, but you poke through the hole and cut it off, and that gives you a little bit of isolation. I still had to stick a little piece of toothpick in the bottom, so when I stuck my nail in there, it still wasn't going to conduct. But now we've got a fiddly bit. Okay, so here comes the fiddly bit. Vape packs say to take clear misers and take, take four of them and pull the center pins out and then file them at a 45 degree angle, possibly with a Dremel tool, and then slice them off and you end up with four little tiny washers. Well, these are not flat. None of the clear misers I have have these flat. The only thing I could find that had a flat center piece was an atomizer, but then if you use an atomizer, I didn't have anything to hold on to, so I just gave up on this whole idea right here. What I did was I used silver solder, not regular solder because it's safer. What I did was I used solder wick and I put I put the nail through the solder wick and then I cut off a piece of it, a little piece, like that much. Then I held it in, actually I stuck it in a potato and I soldered this bit to the head of the, the nail. Then I took and I did the same thing, I took a piece of solder wick, I poked a hole in it with my nail, I cut it off. And instead of the nail, I put it on the end of a toothpick. 
I'll never get it on here on the camera, will I? <laughs> I put that little tiny piece on a toothpick, stuck it in my potato to hold it, and I and uh, cut this off, will be piece. And then I put silver solder on that. Silver solder is a lot harder than regular solder. It's harder to solder with, but it's safer. And anyway, so and then I then I took this out, that left my hole there, and then I sanded these two pieces down flat. That gave me my my piece that I'm going to use my spring tension on, because you put your you put your two little washers on this nail, chink chink. Well, I used. Like I told you, I use solder wick and then one little solder wick washer with silver solder. Then you thread this spring onto it. So you got two little washers up here and then you put the spring onto it. And then you use your pliers to hold this under tension. Now you've got this piece of wire here that you'd have stripped down. This comes up through the scuba gin. You want to figure a way to put the spring under tension and solder the wire around here and then poke it into the hole and figure out how you're going to affix it. Now I used, um, I tried JB Weld, which didn't want to hold on to the stainless steel and it looked ugly. And so I finally ended up with epoxy. So there's my positive epoxied in with my little um, solder wick set up here to make to make a little spring you, you know the spring is so you can push it down and put your wire inside of it and hold it there a little heating coil now on my negative side I did sort of the same thing oh and I kept beeping this out making sure that the red wire yes indeed made connection to the center post down here but did not connect to the body I'm still paranoid about that but anyway um, on the negative side I did a similar thing I used this press fitting that they gave in the kit, I couldn't squish it to hold onto the nail. I couldn't figure out how to hold onto the nail. So I pounded one into this and then I cut up some little strips of aluminum from an, from an aluminum soda can. Then I took the, the nail and pounded it down in there to make it have good contact. And then I uh, put some silver solder on it to hold it in place. And that's how that's held on. Now that sounds all easy, but this was <laughs> this took me forever. <laughs> so there you have that. Okay, I need to talk about the polycarbonate tubing. The polycarbonate tubing comes as one piece, and you have to cut it. So without the O-rings on, it slides on pretty well, and you can slide in all your pieces, and you got it like this. And then I scored it around where I was going to make the cut. Then you have to put something inside of this to hold it firm while you're uh, using your um, pipe cutter, your circular pipe cutter. So, oh, I haven't filed this one down. You have to bevel the edges of all this polycarbonate. But this three quarter inch Teflon rod that I have after it would be filed down fits very snugly in there. They say on the um, Baypax website to use a flashlight if you've got one of the little flashlight mods that fits in there. But you have to have something inside of here that's stiff, that holds it steady. Otherwise when you're cutting this stuff gives, it doesn't cut. It just gives when you're running your pipe cutters around it. So yeah, this three quarter inch Teflon rod is what I used. It worked really well. It was, uh, that's it. And then and then of course you have to you have to like I said bevel the edges the every end and everything then you go to the o-rings like i said before the o-rings that came in my kit were too large they go in the grooves just fine but they stick out way too far and so this did not want to go on to that no matter how much i beveled the inside of the polycarbonate tubing. Uh, this was not going on there. I finally pounded this on there. And so it's never, ever, ever coming off. There's never, ever, ever going to be any way to change e-liquids without just trying to go through the little holes on the top because that's never coming off. <laughs> and same with the top. 
I just had to pound that in there because the O-rings that came in the kit were too large. So for the, the O-ring here that I've got that fits this cap on, there was no way I was going to use one of these too large of O-rings. So I had some uh, stuff in my, in my scrap stuff. And you know, you have your junk in your junk drawers. And I had a little set of O-rings. And I found one little O-ring that if I put some cellophane tape in the groove of this, <laughs> it stuck up far enough to make a nice tight fit, but not, <laughs> um, not too loose and not too hard to get it on and off. But yeah. So these O-rings here, this one, this one, and this one, they're never letting go. That's, they're pounded on. It's just this one O-ring that is my own that is going to come off and on now. <laughs> okay, so now the subject that uh, bothers me the most and I think is bothers lots of folks is what do you use for wicking? Well, like I said, it comes with a five inch piece of fiberglass cord. Well, um, let me show you. I, I decided not to use this because I'll see if I can give you a close up of this. This is what the fiberglass cord looks like when it's unraveled. I mean, obviously you couldn't poke that big fat piece of fiberglass cord down through those, those wicking holes in the scuba gin. But I don't know if you can see it, but there is fiberglass coming off everywhere. When I was trying to unravel the fiberglass cord, my shirt was covered with fiberglass, everything was covered with fiberglass, and I didn't want to suck that into my lungs. No. So here was the question, what do you use for wicking? Okay, so scuba.dan, scuba.dan, I hope I'm saying that right, and many others say use stainless steel mesh. Well, from my former previous atomizer experiments, I have a bunch of this, this uh, stainless steel mesh laying around where I was doing experiments with it. Um, I, I've seen a lot of guys buying this in sheets. Well, if you go to industrial scientific supply places, you can get all uh, different sizes of, of uh, stainless steel mesh. And uh, it comes in this, it's, it's for filters in, in chemistry. And these are sanitized and all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, that's where I get my stainless steel mesh. Now, when I was doing my atomizer experiments last year and I was trying to use stainless steel mesh, I didn't like it because what's, what they're saying to do is take a little half inch strip of it and four inches long. I don't have one that's four inches long, but if I did, I'd try it anyway. But take a little half inch piece, you roll it up. Scuba Dat Dan has a, has a great video on exactly how to do it. And then he says, you, you flame it and quench it, flame it and quench it, flame it and quench it several times. And that's going to make it non-conductive enough to use to wrap your um, canthal or nichrome wire around to make your heating coil. Okay. So last year when I was doing my experiments with this stainless steel mesh, I, I tried all different ways of, and all different temperatures of heating it and quenching it to see for myself because a lot of people were talking about this and it conducts what what they're what they're counting on is like if you have a battery operated gizmo radio or something and you turn it on and it doesn't play if the batteries are if you know the batteries are good you know the second thing to do is you pull out the batteries and you you sand off the little connections and you put the battery back in and see if it works because it's gotten a little bit of tarnish on the battery connectors and it's not making good contact. That's what they're trying to accomplish with heating and quenching the stainless steel is to get a little bit of, of tarnish on the surface of the stainless steel. And that's what you're counting on to make it non-conductive. In my experiments last year building my little homemade atomizers, I just never felt um, like this was the right answer. It, it Tarnishing stainless steel and hoping that tarnish makes it non-conductive is uh, fidgety to me and maybe even a little scary. Uh, you know, the thing is with the whole scuba gin thing is I thought that, wow, this thing is made of solid stainless steel. This thing is going to be, I mean, I could throw this thing, I could squash it, I could drop it, and nothing's going to break. 
Well, the stainless steel is not ever, but everything else about this just feels fragile and fiddly to me. The, you know, uh, epoxying in these little tiny nails with springs on them. You've got a little tiny connect connection in the bottom. If, any, if anything just gets a little cattywampus, this thing's no good. If the positive gets anywhere, if it starts wiggling or anything in its place and touches any of that, that's going to be a dead short. I mean, it's just, uh, it's aggravating to have something that's so beautiful and everything, but um, have it be so fragile. And, and, I, and they, it, I just can't use this stainless steel mesh. If I had a piece that was four inches long, I, I might try it just to have a look and see. I mean, I know on... Uh, on Vapax, my computer's over there is so why I keep pointing. I know on Vapax they talk about, you know, insulating the little holes that you're going to put the stainless steel mesh down in. And Scuba Dad Dan has his nice video showing how he did it. And then he wrapped his wire. And, and then you, you, you just push down on your little, your little uh, washers and put your little wire around your little springs. And it's so cool. And you're done. And you're just, oh, how wonderful. But, um... For me, not so much. I mean, it's hard to push down these springs, and uh, the it's hard to feed the wire around there and get it just right, and then let up on the spring at the right moment. And and what I ended up using was silica silica string from out of a long XL clearizer. Is what I what I ended up using for my wick. That's the bottom line on this. What this is is a giant clearizer. Now, if you don't like clearizers. If you can't get them to work for you, you're never going to like this thing because that's what it is. It's a big clearizer. If you like clearizers, then you'll know you're going to have to fiddle with it and try to keep some, try to find some way to keep it wicking. So you're going to be fiddling with it a lot to keep it wicking. Okay, I wanted to say something about the weight of this. Fully filled this weighs uh, three and three quarters ounces. And uh, it is, if you want to know how, how much it weighs, apples to apples, if you take a C-size battery and a AA and rubber band them together and feel that in your hand, that's what this weighs. So you got to think about that on top of your battery mod or whatever you're going to screw it on, right? Okay, so proof's in the pudding. How good does it vape? This is it on top of my uh, variable voltage, homemade variable voltage mod. This is only at 3.7 volts. It, it is an immense blast of flavor when it's working. When I can get it to wick and it's working, it is a really good blast of flavor. You're going to take your Canthaler nichrome wire, put uh, your voltmeter on ohms and put it at one end of it, run it out the wire until you see the ohmage that you want on your voltmeter, on your ohm meter, like two and a half ohms or whatever you want, and then go a little bit farther and clip it. Then that's how you, I put a nail against my silica wick and wrapped it around and then I clipped it onto my little clips. That sounds easy, but it's really not. There really isn't anything about this that isn't fiddly. And it'll stay working pretty good for a couple of minutes, and then i got to figure out how to get some more e-liquid down into it. And uh, it will, if I lay it down on its side, it will leak. Eventually, it will leak through the fill hole. I've got to get a little silicon something to plug that hole. And um, i got to find out something different for wicking because it's not wicking sufficiently, but if I lay it down on its side, the uh, the e-liquid will come out through the through the wicking holes. So uh, yeah, if you're just looking for something fun to build, and uh, and you like to fiddle with things that are fiddly, you're gonna love scuba din so the uh, scuba din V3. For me. Not so much. And if you put a, a, a 510 connector on it, you can't stand it up. I've got a, I pulled off the, uh, I've got an 808 on here, as I said, 
because I thought that would let it stand up, but it really doesn't. This is an old thing off of a sink. Unscrewed the aerator, <laughs> and then I can set the uh, the scuba gin up on it. But yeah, on a mod, it's gonna have to lay down outside. Now, it's so funny because this weighs uh, just like nothing, <laughs> and this weighs <laughs> three and a three and a quarter ounces or whatever it was I said. Mm. When you get it to wick well, and you get the right uh, ohmage of coil in there that you want for the right voltage that you want, this is actually a very, it's just a superior vape. But you'll get two or three minutes of good vaping on it, and then you got to figure out how to get some more e-liquid up there, or take the top off and drip on it or something. It's, oh well. <laughs> Everybody asked me to do this, so I finally got one of these and built it. And so there's my story, and I'm sticking to it. If you have any questions and comments, please put them below. If you can think of something that would help me out, that'd be great. I didn't even draw on the blackboard. I meant to draw on the blackboard. Okay, I'll draw on the blackboard. Uh, uh, have a great day, guys. It's still Jan out. <laughs> Scoop it, Jan. Steel Jan.